Hey everybody, and Tony here, and welcome to day two of my 4th of July weekend of Fiery Divas, and this time we're taking a look at Elisabetta I from Donizetti's opera Roberto Devero, which was shown at the Zurich Opera House. The conductor was Andrei Jurkevich. The production was by Giancarlo del Monaco. The scenography was done by Ulrich Sen. The set design was done by Mark Vezenen. The costumes were by Marie Luisa Valek. The lights were handled by Jürgen Hoffmann. And the chorus master was Jörg Hemmerling. Now, the thing about Donizetti's Roberto Devero is that this opera hasn't really been performed a lot in America. I mean, this has definitely been performed all throughout Europe, mainly in theaters in Switzerland, Italy, and even that of the United Kingdom, and only some parts of the USA. But it hasn't really been performed too often as compared to the likes of Lucia de la Memor, Don Pasquale, L'Elisir d'Amore, and The Daughter of the Regiment. And what's also quite interesting about this opera is that this is the third opera to feature the three queens, so to say. The first one being Anna Bolena, and then came Maria Stuarda, and then Elisabetta I from Roberto Devereux. And even though Roberto Devereux is the main character of this opera and has been sung by a lot of great lyric and spinto tenors, there's no doubt that the one who steals the damn show was none other than Elisabetta I because, well, she has a lot of great music and this is also a very interesting challenge for a dramatic coloratura soprano because of the many low notes that she has to sing and also those high notes, whether they be Bs, Cs, or even Ds and probably depending on if the soprano might interpolate a few higher notes. And there have been a lot of successful Elisabettas in the past, and those include Beverly Sills, Montserrat Caballé, and Leila Gencher. And, well, the thing about Elisabetta is that this requires a dramatic coloratura soprano with a very powerful sounding voice and a very homogenous one at that because like I said she has a lot of low notes and a lot of high notes as well. So this opera basically poses a challenge not only for Elisabetta but for the other principals as well like Roberto Devereux who needs a full lyric tenor or even that of a spinto tenor to have a huge ringing voice, but also has to be very, very lyrical. And then the Duke of Nottingham, which requires a dramatic baritone, and Duchess Sarah, which requires a dramatic mezzo with very good high notes, almost bordering on Falcon. So this is definitely a very interesting challenge for four principles and this opera has also been widely performed throughout Europe. Now, what did I think of this production of Roberto Devereux at the Zurich Opera House? I have one word to say about the production overall. Outstanding. This is by far one of the best productions that I've seen at the Zurich Opera House. And that is saying something. There is this type of gothic atmosphere that I felt in the set design throughout the entire opera because, well, it's basically a huge um, shade of gray all throughout. And that's basically using it to its advantage because it's like I stepped in a time machine and went back into the 16th century and saw the action happening. It was just so magnificent, just, just seeing such display of beauty and authenticity and respect to the libretto as well. But what's also quite interesting about this production of the opera is that 
The chorus is dressed in clothing from the 1800s, as if though they basically function like a Greek chorus, and or even that of an audience. And basically, they have, they themselves have probably stepped back in time to watch the action happening between Elisabetta, Sarah, the Duke of Nottingham, and Roberto. I thought it was just quite interesting. Now the costumes were just. Just extremely elegant. I was absolutely astonished to see such gorgeous costumes coming from Elisabetta, Sarah, and basically all the characters. I definitely loved Elisabetta's costume. It was just so gorgeous. It was probably one of the most gorgeous costumes I have ever seen in an opera, especially that of Sarah's. So yes, this production of Maria Stuarda excels big time, especially when it comes to such great costumes. So overall, this is definitely a very, very flawless production and one that's so full of life, vibrancy, and a little bit of a gothic atmosphere to give it a little bit more of a kick. But more than anything, it's the costumes that really, really sold me. And what's a great production without great singing? Believe me when I say there has been a lot, repeat, a lot of top-tier singing all around. And this was headed by... The great Edita Grubarova in the in the role of Elisabetta the first. I was almost about to say the title role. Well, mainly because Elisabetta is the one who basically steals the show. So, I happen to have seen Edita Grubarova in a concert version of Donizetti's Lucrezia Borgia. And by the way, you can check my review on that as well. And it was also my first review. And... Here as Elisabetta I, I thought she was just magnificent in her characterization. She is such a stage animal, and it really shows how much experience she has had in this role. Because she's been performing this role for about 20 or more years. She's basically been performing this role for like between 20 to 30 years, and it's been a stable in her repertoire. So it was just absolutely fantastic seeing such artistry and such grace and beauty and freshness that Grubarova had in this interpretation of Elisabetta. Her voice kept that freshness, and even though I did not really care about her low notes, though she tried to her best abilities to sing them very well. It's the high notes that really sold it for me. It was just a huge experience hearing her sing all of those flawlessly sounded high notes and her middle notes were just absolutely great. Her timbre had that freshness even though it wasn't really the same as she sounded like in 20 years ago. She still has that, that beautiful and very bright timbre, and it was just magnificent all throughout. So I basically felt that Edita Gruberova as Elisabetta was just wonderful. And it's no wonder why she has kept it in her repertoire for many, many years, especially in her final aria, Vivi Ingrato, and then Quel Sangue Versato. It was just sung with so much pathos and so much passion that it was just tear-jerking all throughout, especially when she took off her wig. Oh my God, was that heart-wrenching. She basically gave such a heart-wrenching portrayal, a very harrowing portrayal of the queen, and it was just magnificent all throughout. And then we have Pavel Breschlik as the title character, Roberto Devereaux. My god, was his voice 
flawless all throughout. It had that homogenous quality, and when he sang pianissimo, he sang so heavenly in pianissimo, and his high notes were just so ringing. It was just full of that that ring. It was just so full of vibrancy, so full of energy. It was just so thrilling to hear him sing and to see his portrayal of Roberto Devereaux. And mind you, this was his role debut. And I thought it was a very, very memorable role debut that he gave as Roberto Devereaux. It was a very, very flawless interpretation. And his musicality was absolutely peerless. His chemistry with Groborova was also great, especially with that of Simeone, who sung Sarah, and many other colleagues that he sang with. It was just fantastic all throughout. And then Veronica Simeone, who sang Sarah, I definitely love her voice. It had such a powerful ring to it, and even though there was a slight wobble in certain areas, it can be forgiven because she was able to make Sarah such a passionate and at times very sweet character who can't really take the fact that she feels rather tortured inside and is head over heels in love with Roberto Devereaux. Well, basically tortured inside because she has to be very faithful to her husband or else she'll get, she'll get the axe herself. But safe to say that Veronica Simeone was very, very solid in her voice. It's a very powerful instrument, and her high notes were just so clear. It had that clarity, and it was just absolutely fantastic hearing her in this role. And then The Duke of Nottingham was sung by Russian baritone Alexei Markov. His voice is very reminiscent of that of the late Gian Giacomo Guelfi because it was round, it was rich, it was booming, it was, well, dark in quality. And his stage presence was absolutely alluring, especially in his outbreak scenes. It was just so thrilling to see a young Russian baritone like him perform very, very flawlessly and in a repertoire that he is very suited to, the dramatic baritone repertoire. It was just a very flawless portrayal of the Duke of Nottingham. And in the smaller roles, we have Dmitry Ivanche as Lord Cecil, who was very, very fine in voice and characterization, and Dmitry Kaladzke as Sir Guartiero Rayleigh. Very, very solid in voice with that round, rich, basso voice. And also very good characterization as well. And let me just say that the orchestra and chorus contributed so handsomely. It's all thanks to the great conducting done by Maestro Andre Yur. Yur Yurkovich, excuse me. Andre Yurkovich. It was just so magnificent all throughout. So overall, what more can I say except this, this is by far the best production that I've seen during my stay here in Zurich. Everything was so perfect. The set design, the costumes, the singing, the conducting, the chorus, everything. It was such a memorable evening, and it's all thanks to the four principal singers, Madame Gruberova, Madame Simeone, Mr. Breslik, and Mr. Markov, who gave such flawless and very energetic performances all throughout. This has been a very memorable evening at the Zurich Opera House, and it was just, wow, very amazing all throughout, and it was just a very, very 
very memorable evening for opera. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for my last review, which is going to be Bizet's Carmen, starring Kate Aldrich and Brandon Jovanovich as the two tragic lovers. So until then, this is Antoni signing off and wishing you all a good night.